Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss the community acquired pneumonia. What are the causes? How to identify the possible etiologies and how to manage which antibiotic to use. Before that, this video is for educational purposes for healthcare professionals. Guidelines can vary. Patients are advised to consult their healthcare providers and there is no advertisement for any brand or company and references are given in the description section. Starting with the causes of uh, community acquired uh, pneumonia. So it is uh, traditionally divided into two groups, typical and atypical pneumonias. So the causes of typical pneumonia are streptococcus pneumonia. This is uh, indeed um, the most common cause of uh, pneumonia overall. It can be uh, Haemophilus influenza, Staph aureus, Klebsiella or Pseudomonas. Atypical, the most common uh, cause is uh, mycoplasma pneumonia. Other causes are chlamydia, legionella and respiratory viruses. Uh, pathology is usually lobar pneumonia or bronchopneumonia. Lobar pneumonia is due to streptococcus pneumonia and bronchopneumonia are due to gram-negative uh, bacilli. And here the pattern of uh, pathology is interstitial inflammation. Gram stain is uh, identifiable while uh, it is gram positive or negative while it is not identified in atypical cases. Culture on the standard media will be positive, here it is negative. While the treatment of eight, uh, treatment of typical pneumonias include beta, beta lactam antibiotic, they are responsive. And uh, here in atypical, it uh, uh, is macrolides, fluoroquinolols or tetracycline group of drug or maybe antiviral for some respiratory uh, viruses. Here the beta lactam antibiotics are not uh, uh, successful or they are not used here. Uh, other uh, causes uh, depends on the risk factors for uh, pneumonia. So these organisms can vary. Uh, if uh, alcoholism, uh, the most important organism here is streptococcus pneumonia and there can be chances of aspiration. So oral enrops uh, and Klebsiella pneumonia can be a possibility. Uh, COPD or smoking, uh, here H influenza, streptococcus pneumonia are common organisms. In cases of exposure to uh, birds, it is histoplasma or chlamydia species. Whenever there is a structural lung disease, for example, bronchitis, in that case, Pseudomonas is a common organism. Uh, patient has dementia, stroke, uh, so oral anaerobes will be common here due to risk of aspiration. Uh, hotel stay or cruise uh, ships, uh, then uh, the uh, organism will be uh, Legionella pneumonia. Local influenza activity uh, in a community outbreak, obviously it is influenza virus or uh, Staph aureus. So uh, this table is uh, important uh, for uh, finally the MBBS students as a viva question. Uh, symptoms, uh, typical or classical symptoms of uh, pneumonia, cardinal symptoms are fever, it is associated with chills. Uh, there can be dyspnea. Dyspnea due to uh, hypoxemia. Uh, cough will be there. Uh, chest pain positive and it is due to the involvement of the pleura. Uh, sputum production can be there uh, in uh, especially uh, typical uh, uh, pneumonias. And depending on the sputum color, we can diagnose uh, the etiology. Like if it is yellow, most likely it is a bacterial cause. Green uh, sputum is seen in pseudomonas. Uh, rusty sputum is seen in pneumococcal pneumonia. And red currant jelly sputum will be a feature of uh, Klebsiella. So this is a red currant jelly type of the sputum seen in patients having the Klebsiella uh, infection. Uh, Pseudohemoptysis, that means ki, uh, the color of the sputum will be red without any blood, is uh, seen in Seracea. Uh, other features or other symptoms can be diarrhea or headache. Uh, these two symptoms goes in favor of uh, Legionella because Legionella infection, it affects the GIT, it causes SIADH leading to hyponatremia and hyponatremia means headache will be there. Uh, if patient has uh, symptoms of myalgias or arthralgias, uh, they are uh, seen in cases of influenza virus uh, infection. In the science, general physical uh, examination science, uh, clubbing can be there and clubbing suggests 
usually a cavitary infection, uh, uh, chronic cavitary infections or tuberculosis infection. If a patient has ictrus, uh, it is most likely streptococcus pneumonia. The reason being in a streptococcus pneumonia, lobar pneumonia occur, lots of RBC exudation and when RBC get destroyed, uh, there will be heme which convert into bilirubin and that leads to ictrus. Uh, there will be cyanosis and cyanosis represent uh, uh, there is hypoxemia because of the exudation in the alveoli or interstitial uh, pattern of pneumonia. Lymphadenopathy will be typically seen in cases of uh, tubercular infection. Uh, while uh, tachy, tachypnea respiratory rate will be increased, use of accessory muscles will be uh, there and all these indicate uh, that patient is having hypoxia. On uh, a respiratory system examination, uh, there will be a dullness on percussion and uh, that will be a hepatization phase of uh, pneumonia. Uh, a, uh, the typical pneumonia they cause hepatization phase, uh, red and gray hepatization. Uh, crackles or crepitations will be positive and uh, these crepitation indicate exudate in the alveoli. Uh, bronchial breath sound, again that, uh, that will represent some sort of consultation. Uh, pleural friction rub, it indicate that pleura is also involved in these pneumonias. Now the approach, if a patient of pneumonia comes to us, uh, so the first step will be we have to diagnose clinically is it pneumonia. So pneumonia will be diagnosed on the basis of uh, the clinical features and of course chest x-ray findings. And second is what is the likely microorganism so that we can start with the antibiotic, empirical antibiotics straight away. So, uh, is it pneumonia? So, uh, clinical features uh, will be assessed, the typical features of uh, uh, cough, fever, chest pain and sputum production uh, plus new infiltrates on the chest x-ray. So, these are suggestive of uh, pneumonia. Differential diagnosis of the pneumonia clinically. Uh, these will be uh, bronchial asthma or bronchitis but in asthma and bronchitis uh, there will be no bronchial breath sounds. Uh, there will be wheezing sounds which can be present here. Uh, in cases of exacerbation of the COPD, barrel shaped chest uh, will be seen and again uh, ronchi will be positive. Uh, typical bronchial breath sound will not be a feature of COPD. Uh, third differential diagnosis can be heart failure but uh, uh, cardiac signs will be positive, S3 sign will be there, S3 will be positive, JVP will be raised in heart failure. Uh, the fourth important differential diagnosis is pulmonary embolism which is characterized by absence of respiratory signs. There will be no crepitations, no ronchi, no bronchial breath sounds. Only thing will be tachypnea. Now uh, chest x-ray. So chest x-ray has both the roles means ki it is used for the diagnosis of the uh, pneumonia and also it will hint towards the etiological agent. So in the chest x-ray, uh, what is the microorganism we can see here uh, in this chest x-ray there is homogeneous opacity and there is a sharp line. You can see this sharp line separating the consolidation or uh, opacity from the lungs, normal lungs, sharp line. So this is a typical lobar pneumonia and the most important cause of the lobar pneumonia is streptococcus pneumonia. In this x-ray you can see that there is a bulging of the horizontal uh, fissure and that is uh, highly typical of Klebsiella pneumonia. In this x-ray you can see a cavity and cavity there is a clear cut uh, air fluid level. Uh, so this is a, a cavity with the air fluid level and the uh, organisms can be oral anaerobes due to uh, aspiration, gram negative bacilli or can be tuberculosis. Uh, while here you can see a typical uh, nematocele, uh, so this uh, uh, is air filled cavity. So nematocele uh, important organism is uh, Staph aureus. Now the other investigations, uh, gram strain, sputum examination. So adequacy should be assessed by microbiologist uh, that uh, if uh, sputum has more than 25 leukocytes per low power field and less than 10 epithelial cells per low power field. So that sputum is adequate because sometimes what a patient do they give saliva instead of sputum. So that will not be uh, giving any information to us. Uh, we go for a sputum AFB even if the history is short duration every patient of the pneumonia with infiltrate should have sputum AFB check done. 
स्पूटम कल्चर हैज अ सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ लेस देन फिफ्टी परसेंट वाई ब्लड कल्चर ब्लड कल्चर हैज अ वेरी लो सेंसिटिविटी बट देर आर सम इंडिकेशन ऑफ गेटिंग द ब्लड कल्चर डन इन केसेज ऑफ निमोनिया सो दीज इंडिकेशन आर न्यूट्रोपीनिया पेशेंट्स पेशेंट हु स्प्लीन इज रिमूव कॉम्प्लीमेंट डेफिशियंसीज पेशेंट हैविंग क्रॉनिक लिवर डिजीज सिवियर कम्युनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया द फीचर वी विल सी सब्सिक्वेंटली रिस्क ऑफ मेथिसिलिन रेजिस्टेंस टेफोरियस और सूडोमोनास इज देयर सो इन दोस वील गो फॉर अ ब्लड कल्चर यूरिन एंटीजन फॉर न्यूमोकोकल एंड लीजनेला आर अवेलेबल एंड दीज आर यूजली डन फॉर सिवियर केसेस वाइल पी सी आर टेस्ट फ्रॉम द फेरेंजियल स्वेब इज डन फॉर रेस्परेटरी वायरल इन्फेक्शन लाइक कोविड और इन्फ्लुंजा वायरस नाउ द अप्रोच सो द फर्स्ट अप्रोच इज टू नो कि वेदर वी शुड गिव एंटीबायोटिक टू द पेशेंट ऑन एन ओ पी डी बेसिस और वी शुड एडमिट द पेशेंट सो दिस स्कोर कर्व सिक्सटी फाइव स्कोर इज यूजफुल स्कोरिंग सिस्टम विच डिसाइड कि वेयर द साइट ऑफ केयर वील गो फॉर अ पेशेंट हैविंग निमोनिया सो सी इज कन्फ्यूजन विल बी गिवन वन पॉइंट यू इज एलिवेटेड यूरिया ब्लड यूरिया मोर देन सेवन सो टू कन्वर्ट इट इन टू मिलीग्राम पर डेसीटर वी विल मल्टीप्लाई दिस वैल्यू बाय सिक्स रेस्परेटरी रेट मोर देन थर्टी blood pressure systolic less than 90 and diastolic less than 60 and age of more than 65 so in opd when patient comes for the um, assessment of pneumonia or with pneumonia symptoms so just follow this rule of 90 60 30 90 less than 90 systolic bp less than 60 diastolic bp or more than 30 is the respiratory rate so just assess these in the opd and you will be able to decide whether you should admit the patient or uh, give antibiotic on opd basis so this is a important flow chart if the curb score come out to be zero uh, that means ki uh, we will treat the patient on an opd basis if the scoring system is 1 or 2 uh, then a patient should be treated on ipd basis and uh, if the score is more than 3 then uh, we should admit the patient in icu because mortality rates are high other criteria for hospitalization are Uh, if patient is unable to accept orally, so these are practical things. Ki if patient is not able to accept orally, admit the patient. If patient has some sort of cognitive impairment that patient is not able to take oral antibiotics or patient does not have any uh, uh, caregivers, oxygen saturation when it is less than ninety two percent, so patient should be any of these a patient should be admitted. Uh, then for other criteria of icu admission is severe pneumonia so severe pneumonia is respiratory failure which require invasive mechanical ventilation or patient is in septic shock requiring vasopressor agents and any of these two are the criteria for severe community acquired pneumonia uh, then there are other minor criteria of uh, severe pneumonia as well if any three of them are present then patient should be admitted in the icu so these are respiratory rate more than 30 pao2 upon fio2 ratio of less than 250 multi lobar infiltrates in the chest x ray patient is disoriented uremia blood urea nitrogen more than 20 some of these are including the cups criteria as well leukopenia uh, wbc less than 4000 or platelet count less than 1 lakh hypothermia core temperature less than 36 or hypotension uh, which require aggressive fluid resuscitation uh, these are also severe cap if any uh, three of these nine criteria are present this is severe cap and if you want the pdf of this uh, lecture so this is available for uh, paid members by joining the channel you can ask for the pdf uh, via email now the treatment uh, so initial treatment for out patients with community acquired pneumonia patients so first we should understand the comorbidities and risk of mr sa and pseudomonas infection so the comorbidity include uh, chronic heart lung or kidney disease diabetes alcoholism malignancy and asplenia risk of pseudomonas or mrsa 
patient has taken antibiotic within the past three months or patient has contact with the, any health care system like any nursing home patient was admitted or a small hospital, big hospital patient was admitted. So this predisposes the patient for risk of uh, drug resistance. Now OPD treatment. When there is no comorbid condition, there is uh, no risk factor for antibiotic resistance. So antibiotic that we can uh, give to the patient, amoxicillin, beta-lactam antibiotic, the dose is 1 gram 3 times a day or we can give doxycycline 100 milligram twice a day or you, we can start with the macrolides. So macrolides are like azithromycin, uh, clarithromycin, uh, these antibiotics can be given. Why? If uh, there is some comorbidity or risk factor for antibiotic resistance are there, uh, either we can give dual therapy or a monotherapy. In the dual therapy, uh, cephalosporine uh, will give cephodoxin uh, 200 mg twice a day or cefuroxime 500 mg twice a day plus. Uh, we can uh, uh, add here uh, either a macrolide or doxycycline or we can give amoxicillin clavulinic acid combination the dose is 1 gram twice a day. Or monotherapy we can go for respiratory fluoroquinolones. While in India, uh, there is one uh, problem with the uh, fluoroquinolones that there can be a tuberculosis. So we have to rule out the tuberculosis because these uh, giving monotherapy to such patients can predispose the patient for uh, drug resistance. Initial treatment for inpatients. Uh, so in these, uh, without the risk factor for MRSA or pseudomonas infection, uh, non-severe pneumonia. Uh, we will go for either beta-lactam and macrolide antibiotic or respiratory fluoroquinolols. Res, uh, beta-lactam will be ampicillin and selbactam 1.5 to 3 grams uh, 4 times a day or ceftriaxone 1 to 2 grams uh, twice a day. So these are given uh, as intravenous agents. Macrolide dose will be the same which we have discussed previously. Why? Uh, severe pneumonia, uh, we go for uh, the combination of beta-lectam plus macrolide, same here or we can give beta-lectam with respiratory fluoroquinolones, combination of these uh, two agents we will give. While if macrolides can't be used like a prolonged QT interval, uh, so fluoroquinolones may be used but very important if there is no clinical suspicion of TB after sending the sputum or endotracheal aspirate samples to rule out uh, tuberculosis. Now, uh, if a patient has risk factors for the MRSA or pseudomonas, so along with these antibiotics, we will add coverage for MRSA or pseudomonas. So what are those antibiotics? Those antibiotics for MRSA are either vancomycin, dose is 15 mg per kg uh, tw twice a day or linezolid 600 mg twice a day. For pseudomonas, uh, we will give piperacillin or tazobactam. This is one of the popular uh, antibiotic which is given for pseudomonas uh, three or four times in a day. Uh, other antibiotics, uh, cephalosporin group of antibiotics uh, we can give, we can we give imipenem, miropenem or uh, estrionem we can give for pseudomonas. Now, follow up of these patients. So uh, the follow up of these patients, fever and leukocytosis usually take two to four days to get resolved. So at least give 48 hours time to the patient before the taking the sample for uh, CBC to know ki whether patient is improving, uh, uh, TLC is improving. Uh, while uh, chest radiograph abnormality, they resolve late. So there is a latent, uh, latent period. So it could be 4 to 12 weeks of improvement. For a hospital patients, uh, radiograph can be taken 4 to uh, 6 weeks later on. While for outpatient, routine follow-up chest x-ray is not necessary if a patient is non-smoker and symptoms have resolved within 5 to 7 days. So it is unnecessary to get the x-ray done. It is all clinical assessment which is done for these uh, patients. So this is about the protocol of uh, community acquired pneumonia, how to go about the community acquired pneumonia and which antibiotics uh, we should choose. Uh, so uh, if you have any doubts, any comments, you can ask us in the comment section. Thank you.